legal mechanisms. Sadak has also called for national dialogue in the DRC. The country's electoral board, Seni, yesterday declared Felix Tisakedi as the provisional winner. Sadak joined other foreign powers that have reacted cautiously to the outcome of the DRC election results. The regional body called for restraint. Well, the Sadak statement, just like that of the African Union Commission, Musa Fanki Mahmoud, did not congratulate the winner. The Catholic Church, Belgium and France have disputed the provisional results, saying they do not reflect the data collected from observers. Sadak urged uh, for patience as the country awaits the release of final results. All right, to get a uh, comment from the ground, we have invited Amy Zonven. He's the editor of the Kinshasa Times. He joins us now for, on the line from Lubumbashi. Uh, very good evening to you, uh, Zon Mr. Zonveni. Thank you so much for joining us. What's your feeling uh, within the opposition, respectively, Martin Fayulu, who has threatened court action? Yes, indeed. Martin Fayulu has uh, strongly disputed the, the, the results that have been announced. And uh, tomorrow he will be lodging his complaints with the Constitutional Court, and he says that he will provide all the, the evidence indicating that, indeed, he has emerged victorious. And what's the Catholic Church uh, saying now? Because uh, all along they've been saying that they know who the winner is, but uh, they will have uh, withheld such information. What are they saying now? What the Catholic Church said was that uh, they, did, uh, they do know who is the true victor, but the onus is not on the church to announce the person who has won the elections, and they say that if there's anyone who has grievances, these grievances should be uh, filed to the constitutional court, and that's exactly what Martin Powell will do. But it's quite strange that they did not name the person. They simply say that the results did not reflect uh, the reality of the data that they have collected. About 1.2 million Congolese uh, in, in Beni, it's safe to say, have been, uh, you know, have been robbed of an opportunity or of their right to exercise their democratic right to vote. What's the situation now in Beni? That's the excluded area. Beni still maintains that they have the right to vote, but it is unfortunate that now, once the provisional results that were announced are confirmed, the president-elect will be sworn in, and that will be final, which means the voters from Beni and the other constituencies that were robbed of the right will only be voting for the members of parliament, but not for a president. And what's the status of the free press in the DRC? For instance, we saw earlier on in the, in the run-up to the election, some of the observers saying that they couldn't go out and observe some of the election. Uh, some have been stuck in their hotel rooms for days. And, uh, and we saw uh, last week uh, Radio France International uh, being stripped of their accreditation to cover the elections. Uh, what's the status of a free press in that country? Uh, right now, if, you, if, we, if I base my, my, my answer on the various reports that have been announced in previous years and recently, I think there is still a lot of room for improvement in terms of free press and the DRC, and that has been shown by Radio France International being uh, uh, curtailed and not, not being allowed to operate freely, as are many other press outlets, mostly from the opposition. So there seems to be about constraints on the freedom of the press in the country. And the internet, has it been restored? It has been uh, very shortly yesterday in the morning, but the shortly thereafter, again, the country uh, internet was cut again. And up until now, it is still, very, it is still uh, uh, cut and not restored without any explanation from the, 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 the powers that be. Let's talk about Mr. Sisekedi uh, in detail. Does he have the political clout or the gravitas to bring about the much-needed change in the DRC? Well, it is believed that his uh, victory seems to uh, emanate from an arrangement from the regime. He has never held any uh, uh, position set aside being member of parliament, which he has had uh, up until uh, the election was uh, that, that, that just been announced. So it is believed that he will. It, the learning curve will be a, a tad bit steep for him before he becomes quite uh, able to shoulder the responsibilities of, of a president. So probably he will have a, a little bit of learning to do before he, he, he really.
have, uh, get the gravitas necessary for the position. You just mentioned an arrangement or an agreement with the regime. I mean, that comes in the backdrop of, uh, of calls that there's been a sort of a, a power-sharing deal between Mr. Joseph Kabila and Mr. Sisekedi. What's the real story here? Is there any deal of some sort? Nothing has transpired other than the fact that it is reported that Mr. Chisakedi has held a meeting with President Kabila shortly before the results were announced, and nothing from that meeting transpired. So many now start to believe that maybe from that meeting we might end up having a, a power-sharing agreement in the form of uh, Chisakedi's uh, political camp, which is called known as Kaj. Uh, creating a larger platform in the parliament from which the prime minister will emerge. So possibly there is that possibility of a power share. Not as fair, but there is a possibility of the emerging polity being in some sort of a power sharing agreement, even though it won't be in a form of agreement as, they, as, as, as per se. Well, it wasn't just one meeting between Mr. Joseph Kabila and uh, Mr. Sisekedi. Earlier, I mean, yesterday, uh, we had the special advisor to Mr. Felix Sisekedi, uh, Claude Ibakai, who said that there's been a couple of more other meetings leading, like before, and leading to the elections. And, uh, I mean, where does this leave Mr. Joseph Kabila? Is he likely to bounce back in politics if the reports are anything to go by? I think nothing can be ruled out. Uh, chances are that Mr. Kabila, when he leaves the state house, will still retain a certain amount of uh, political weight that he can he can wield in this or that uh, direction. Bear in mind that in the DRC, the Constitution says that when a president leaves office, he becomes a senator. So President Kabila effectively is a senator. And it could still be playing a very important role in the, the, the political configuration that will be emerging from the, the, the polls. So definitely so. I think you will still be re retaining a certain amount of, of power to maneuver. Well, so many international bodies and uh, international observer groups have been saying that the peaceful have been, uh, I mean, the, the elections have been relatively peaceful, but very few are talking about the actual uh, outcome of the results. We heard earlier on the African Union chairperson, um, well, saying that uh, welcoming the outcome of the elections, but uh, he stopped short of congratulating uh, Mr. Sisagedi. What does that tell you? That is indicative of the fact that these results first are provisional. And on the other hand, uh, if, we, if I base uh, my, uh, my analysis on what uh, the French foreign minister has said, they were very outright in saying that it is Mark Fayoulou who has won the elections. And the United States only today uh, took note of the, the winner without, any, any, uh, without adding any other thing, which means... Uh, People still want to wait until those irregularities that have been mentioned here and there are addressed, and that therefore we know who finally is uh, the president-elect. But in the DRC, it has been consistent that whenever there is an election, it is the provisional winner that ends up becoming the final winner. All right, Mr. Zonveni, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. That is uh, A. May Zonveni. He's the editor of the uh, Lusaka Times, uh, speaking to us live from Lubumbashi. This is The Globe.